excited. She is coming home for the first time in eons. Wow. So, from where? From Denver. By way oh. of Gulf Shores. She oh, that's right. Her house yeah, for yeah. A while. This is your uh, newly married daughter, is it not? Nope. Not married. Oh, the other one. Not married. I don't have a newly married, but I have one who moved to Denver because she just wanted to live there for a while. And loved it enormously, but the housing market there is so hideous that... I know. That's why I moved. Even with money, you can't find a home. So We got a good price on our house because reality was going up, 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 up. Oh. Um, and that's probably going to happen here in Missouri. Uh, Missouri passed legal medical marijuana. That's really what happened in Colorado. The is total exactly legalization of pot drove the reality up as East and West Coast investors moved in to take advantage of the relatively very low square footage rental rates. Mm -hmm. But so, it was it was eye opening. The the lack of I mean Seriously, it's not that you can't afford the housing. It's that there is none. Uh-huh. So. Well, I am wondering. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying that was interesting. It was worse than Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Well. At least well, in Manhattan, I, you can find something. I'm not sure that'll ever happen here in Missouri, but property is bound to get more expensive as overpopulation continues. Mm-hmm. And especially as the UN works hard to put impoverished third world people in other places of the world, which is their agenda. They're doing a good job of it in Canada. They're doing a good job of it here too, apparently. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what drove me out of Colorado finally was when they moved the Somali village in six tenths of a mile from the house in a in an urban project that I had envisioned would house American homeless people. Right. <laughs> of which we had many in Denver living under bridges and in cardboard boxes. And none of them ended up in this nice Habitat for Humanity housing. Yeah. It was all Somalis. And I thought, this does not bode well. There were a lot of things going on in that neighborhood that did not bode well. And I'm so glad we moved. I'm and I would never too. consider moving back to Colorado. But I'm wondering if my mom is going to be willing and able to negotiate her house i finally got daryl to agree at least in theory or hypothetically that he would want to buy this house if we could negotiate a good price the house where we're, we are living now in fenton with the beautiful view of the lake and very little else to recommend it frankly it's not that greatly it's not that great of a construction of house when you walk in the front door, you have to decide right away, am I going upstairs or downstairs? It's split level, mm -hmm. which makes it hard to move things in and out. Um, basically, the draw is the lake right. and the dock on the lake. So yesterday, he and I had a discussion for the first time where we talked about how much we'd be willing to pay for the house. I've got the down payment and he's got the income right now and in six weeks we expect he's going permanent at a very large company here a major employer in the st louis area he's been there it was a six-month contract and he's a month and a half away from completing it and they love him i have a feeling they will offer him permanent employment and at that point he could qualify for a mortgage but he said he never wants to have a mortgage again and i've been saying well what's you know the alternative is renting and it's a screw, yes, it <laughs> basically. Is. It's an economic screw. And he doesn't uh, – this was the first time he's, he allowed, at least in conversation, I didn't use the word mortgage, but he said this was the number he would offer my mom. Well, the number he would offer my mom is similar to the number I would offer my mom, and it's rather lower than the number she has in her mind. Right. So the question is, will she be – able to negotiate, willing to negotiate, she believes she's going to run out of money, that she'll outlive her money. And I don't know how much money she has or how much money she earns through her investments, so I can't speculate on that. <clears throat> My brother is in charge of her finances, and now he's turned downright antagonistic, as you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so 
<clears throat> I better get this stuff out of my throat if I'm going to be reading. So I'm just wondering if if she draws a very hard line and says, <clears throat> this is, excuse me a moment. See if I can get that worked out there. I'm not sure I did. Even if she got her asking price, there would be a realtor's fee and Missouri taxes, which would knock a significant amount of money out of her pocket. And I'm yes. going to build that case. Plus, if she wanted to do me a favor, she could cut me a family-friendly rate. And that's my that's going to be my presentation to her in a few months. And in September, I can see if I pre-qualify for a mortgage. But I've been working about half time and I got my W-2 and I'm just not earning enough, it seems to me, to qualify for any much of a mortgage. I don't, if I were a lender, I don't think I'd want to lend me money right. unless I had someone else like Daryl with a solid income, you know, permanent employment, good, good income level. Um, you know, I'm not sure that together a lender would lend to us under the new rules, but it's something we can certainly find out. That begs the issue of whether my mom is willing to negotiate because behind my mom is my brother. Mm -hmm. And my brother may well be saying, I don't see why she should be cut a deal. Why should she get a good deal? It helps me more if we sell to some stranger who will pay more money. You know, I mean, that's his thinking. And I, I will address all the mathematics of all that, how how much it benefits, how much it takes away. And then she can make up her own mind. And I'm not going to bother arguing. I'm not going to I'm not going to use a lot of time persuading her because there's lots of houses. Yes. And and in this area, at least, there's lots of houses. There aren't that many houses for sale, actually. And there certainly aren't that many for a low price. Those days are kind of over unless you buy something very distressed in foreclosure I like the house on the other side of mom ironically the house on the left facing the lake is worth a quarter million dollars on Zillow and the house on the right sold for 80,000 a year ago now it's up to 110 on Zillow already and the owner has done some improvements on it but I think basically it's still structurally unsound Right. The basement is caving in, so I don't think he's fixed that. I don't. It's not clear he plans to. I'm not sure what his plan is with the house, and I'm not sure I need to know. But when you have a house on one side worth two hundred fifty thousand, and another on the other side, directly the other side, one hundred ten thousand, the truth of your house probably lies somewhere in between. Correct. And mom thinks her house is worth as much as the next door house, which basically could be featured in better homes and gardens as well. It's very well maintained and very well modeled. And her house isn't. It, it's got a rough basement and our, parts of the basement are rough, exposed pipes and wiring. And both of the bathrooms are out of date and got rust, you know, in the and, and old tile. And I just know I, I'm looking with a critical eye. She doesn't have a critical eye. And frankly, she might get her asking price, and I haven't run the numbers net yet. It might behoove me to let her try to get her asking price, but I think the price differential we're talking isn't enough to make much of a difference in terms of future inheritance, and that's the argument that I'll make to her right. is that there's no harm in you're cutting me a good deal. You're doing me a favor, giving me a place to live where I don't – basically, I don't want to move again. Moving is a pain in the butt. So there you have it. So my family continues to limp along, and I've realized I cannot change them, uh, and there's no point. The other thing, the epiphany I had after this whole thing with my brother was that no matter how much I wish and hope, my mother and my brother will never change. No, they they don't want to change, and they are incapable of, and therefore they are incapable of changing. So my brother will always be a sadistic, bullying, split personality person. A nice guy on the one hand and a bully tyrant on the other. You know, just, he's got schizophrenic tendencies as far as I can tell. I, I don't like the labeling, but they label me, so this is what I perceive. He's off his nut, he's power hungry, and he's got mom's ear. So I'm fairly powerless to have any much influence. Although today I did send her three health articles I wrote saying 40% of my content is health articles. And here's some you might find interesting. In other words, try to 
dilute the damage he's done trotting mm-hmm. out inflammatory political articles I wrote around the midterms or whenever. And I do feel strongly about certain issues. I do feel that uh, the Muslimization of America is a bad thing because Muslims have stated they don't want to integrate. That's the only reason that people are against Islam, that Westerners are against Islam, is because Islamics say we're the enemy, we're their enemy, we're infidels, and we all deserve to die. We're all subspecies. So they started it, basically, and the liberal panderers are doing their darndest, for whatever reason, to get Muslimization happening, and state by state, we're seeing it happen. I think it's important to raise consciousness because the mainstream media has been instructed to ignore this. Yes, they have, and they're doing it beautifully. I really don't care if my mom disagrees about it. She's old and she's dying. Um, I'm also reconciled to the fact that I may be written out of the will by the time she's dead. My brother may be on an active campaign now to get me out because she mentioned it. There's no threat to my being out, which suggests to me that he's working at that as well. I'm the bad daughter. I'm the political enemy. I don't deserve anything. He deserves it all. Well, if she spent it all by the time she's dead, it's kind of moot, isn't it? <laughs> I she's have found that to be true. It all. Maybe she will. You know, I don't know. It's her I'm money. in no position to, to analyze because I haven't been given the facts. I know she's a fearful person, and I don't, I don't hang with fearful people. It's right. no way to live. <laughs> Well, and That's why you, it's no way to been, die either. You know, you've been through the shit as well with your family, yes. and you chose to overcome. And I just listened to you have a very strong, positive communication, if brief, with your daughter. I mean, you know, this is that would that conversation would never happen in my family. Well, fortunately, with my children, I can do that. With my adults, I could not. Which is probably why I can with my children. But it's hard. It's hard when you come from people that are are not what you would expect them to be. And I found that it actually does make me rise above and put forth effort. Because that's all it really is, is effort at communication. And the one that you heard me speaking with is very good at communication also, even though she will Mm -hmm. have a panic episode or get bent out of shape about something and she'll fly off a bit here or there. But as a rule, you know, she was talking to me about something and I said, I understand. And she was like, don't respond to me with that, please. And I said, but I do understand. I mean, I've walked that walk. And she was like, yeah, but I know that you use that. And to me, it feels like you're condescending. And I just don't like that term. I said, oh, well, what would make you more comfortable? And she said, you know, I think that may be true. Or I don't agree with that because. And I said, well, I'm perfectly fine with that, too. And I will be dead gum if the next time that we were talking, She was telling me something, and I was like, oh, I so understand that. And then I said, well, while I do, I also agree with you. (laughs) My bad, chick. So, you know, we're good at communicating what we are looking for in our communication, I guess, is the way to put that. But it was a little thing, but it, it made her feel validated. So I was just like, all right, that's not a big deal. It's no skin off my nose. I'm still saying the same thing. So we're good. <laughs> Even though to me it's it very was hard. not a, a matter that, that um, mattered. Uh, yeah, well, it's, you know, that's what I admire in a family dynamic and, and what's lacking in mine. I keep hoping for a change, and that change is never going to happen. Uh, my mother is never going to be more mentally acute. She'll be less and less mentally acute. Her memory will fail more and more. This is why I'm starting to put 
important things in writing in email.